shake yourself saints come on let's give God some praise in here this morning hallelujah he's been good to us I say God has been good to us is there anything that you have to praise him for this morning can you think of anything has he been good to you this morning come on hallelujah 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 you ought to be glad you can clap your hands this morning. Some folks don't even have hands. Glad you can stand on your own two feet. Come on and give him some praise this morning. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Oh, bless your Lord. Lord, we praise you this morning. We give you all the honor, all the glory. And God, we ask you to speak to us this morning. We need a word from heaven this morning, God. We need to hear from you, Lord. And we give ourselves over to you today that you would feed us from on high. In Jesus' name, let the redeemed say, hallelujah. Sit down, saints. You can be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel good. Hallelujah. I feel good because I'm saved sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, running for my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a good God. He's a good God, and he's a good God all the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I praise God for his goodness this morning. I thank him because... He is more than enough. I say he's more than enough. Hallelujah. He's more than enough. I'm excited about him this morning. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I hope you had a good weekend. Glory to God. A lot was going on this weekend. Glory to God. Amen. People were in, in sports all over the place. All kinds of things were happening. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. I went to the golf course trying to learn how to play golf again. Praise you. Trying to get back in the game. Bless the Lord. And I'm glad you guys had cricket matches this weekend because the golf course was relatively empty. Praise the Lord. So nobody had to worry about... <laughs> Me slowing them up. <laughs> Jesus. Bless the Lord. Oh, you won. Jamaica won. All right. All right. I heard um I heard that was a race this, this weekend too. Fastest man in the world. It's still the fastest in the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's amazing. That's amazing. Amen. Faster than any man that's ever run in the world. Now, that's amazing, saints. 
That's just a, that's an amazing feat. Praise the Lord. I was saying to someone, I wish I could be the best in the world at something. You know, that that's got to feel awesome to just be the best of best at something. Glory to God. Well, I don't know. Glory to God. Maybe that's vanity. I guess I don't know. But it must might, might must feel awful awful good to be the best at what you do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It must I'm feel good. Huh? I'm the <laughs> oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. No, I'm serious. What you know, I would have would love to have been the best at something. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. But nevertheless, let me see if I can live holy. See if I can be better at that. Glory to God. Amen. I don't want anybody to beat me living holy. Praise you, Jesus. I want to, be, amen. Glory to God. I don't want to fall behind and living holy. Praise you, Jesus. I want to go through a, a word. Uh, we're still dealing with the study guide from the World Conference um, Fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. But I want to go into a lesson in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter today and see if it will help us to understand a little more about fellowshipping with God. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Uh, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, a very familiar chapter. Many theologians have taught this, and we've taught it oftentimes, but I want to use this chapter today to shed a little bit more light on fellowshipping with God. Uh, but let me prerequisite that with this. The problem, I didn't realize how severe, I didn't really realize how severe, and, I, uh, and, and before I get, get started, I want everyone that I want everyone to take a seat. I want everyone that is working, amen, to be attentive. Bless the Lord. If there's anyone in the control room that doesn't have to be there, come out, take a seat. We need to hear this today. We need to hear this. Praise you, Jesus. God is speaking to his people. And those that have an ear will hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. I must confess that I, I know that the problem in the church, or more specifically in Bible teachers, is unbelief. I know that. But I did not realize until recently how deep unbelief is in the face of the truth, in the face of the truth bearing witness with our spirit, because that's what truth does. People in this ministry have found themselves in a very precarious position. They hear the truth and it bears witness with their spirit. And they say amen. But then they think about things. 
They begin to process the truth through their reasoning. And once they complete the process, it's no longer truth. But the deception there is that they don't dare say it's not true. They don't say it's not true. But there is an element of unbelief lurking in their inner man, down in the soul. This is a problem. This is judgment material. This is a judgment situation. Because whenever the truth comes and bears witness with your spirit, then God knows that you understood it. Are you hearing God? When you are taught something and your spirit bears witness of it, you know it. You know when your spirit bears witness. But now to, to reason that truth through the fleshy mind. You know, we take a spiritual truth and run it through a fleshy organ called the brain where we have our little reasoning. And once it goes through there, it's disannulled. That is cause for judgment. That's coming up in the judgment. Okay, let's be even more specific here. Walking in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. I've been teaching that for <laughs> several years now. And let me tell you where most of you have come to. You have, some of you, accepted the fact that we don't have to sin. Most of you have accepted that as a fact. We don't have to sin. We can live a sinless life. Most of you have accepted that in Bible teachers. It's hard to remain in Bible teachers if you don't accept that because it's always in your face. You know, the fact that we don't have to sin. As it relates to walking in the spirit, you have embraced that. You believed it. And you know that when you sin, you sin by choice. You've accepted that most of you. But there's another progression or there's another uh, side to walking in the spirit. Another component, I should say, to walking in the spirit. And that is Galatians, I believe it's 5 and 24 and 25 says that those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. And then Paul goes on to say, if we, walk, if we live in the Spirit, we should walk in the Spirit. Isn't that right? Now, the latter part of that, that, that second verse there, you, 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 you know, you've, you've embraced that as truth. You, you, you know, you've accepted it even in your little brain. You've accepted, most of you have accepted that we, if we walk in, the, if we live in the spirit, we should walk in the spirit. We should not sin. You, you've just about accepted that. But it's the verse before that one. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. That's the verse you 
have rejected. And that's a very strong word, reject. It's a very strong word. But as I said earlier, your spirit bears witness when you hear it. Because, number one, you can't get around the fact that it's written. And every time I teach it, I ask you, what does affections mean? You're the one that shoot back at me. It means emotions, and desires, so forth and so on. So your spirit says, that's God's word. And not only that, you're reading it for yourself. That's God's word. So I can't say that what she's teaching is not the word of God. Can't really say that. And your spirit has bear witness to the truth. Your spirit has. But once again, here comes reasoning. You begin to reason. Why do you reason? Because you've fallen short of the word. And falling short of it, you begin to reason. How so? Well, let's, let's go where Satan has taken us, some of you. You would say, but I'm not falling short. I'm not in sin. Some of you are, would say that. So, because when I say falling short, you know, that implies sin. Somewhere you're missing the mark. Well, it still does. It still does. It means that you're missing the mark somewhere. So where, where is that mark being missed? When you receive this word, as it relates to sin, you say, I'm not in sin. But the scripture says, those that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and its lusts. That means it's emotions, it's desires, and you're the one that said it also means feelings. Didn't you say that? Hello? Hello? Amen. Feelings. Am, am, is, is it fair to say that affection is a feeling? It's a feeling. Glory to God. So, if it's a feeling, if, if affections is a feeling, and lust itself is a feeling, isn't it? A desire. Lust is strong desire. Hmm? Strong desire. So if that is the case, then the scripture is declaring that when we became Christ, all, somebody say all, all. of the emotions, the desires, and the Feelings of flesh were crucified. Is that the, Nigel, is that what the, what the word is saying? Dr. Leverage, is that what it's saying? I mean, you're a doctor, a psychiatrist at that. You deal with mind. 
And it's the way you think that causes you to feel, right? Now, this says all of the feelings and desires of the flesh have been crucified. Now, I'll ask you again, what does crucified mean? See, we don't do anything else today. We need to at least come to a place of belief. Even if you're not walking in it, believe it. You don't have to wait until you walk in something to believe it. Come on. In order to get born again, you got to first believe that Jesus is Lord. Isn't that right? Before he ever becomes your Lord, you got to believe he is Lord. Amen. Come on, are you working with me? So if I don't accomplish anything else this morning, I want to bring some, some more people to a place of belief. Because the devil is riding on this. You leaders... Some of you leaders don't believe this. Some of you do not believe that the flesh and all of its emotions, desires, and feelings and lusts were crucified when you received Christ. So now the devil, the devil causes you to make allowances, give you a, you know, that, and the, you know, the scripture is so faithful. It says don't give place to the, to, to, to the flesh. Don't, don't make a provisions for the flesh. Doesn't it say that? I wonder why he said that. Don't make provisions for the flesh. Why, why, why is he saying that? Why is he saying that? Praise you, Jesus. Why does he say that? Don't make provisions for the flesh. Because there should never be a space. There should never be a space between sonship and humanity that we dwell in. There should never be a time when we feel like or we manifest the feelings of human beings. Hello? Hello? Boy, they, they, you know, people, people say, what, what is wrong with Dr. Banks? We, now we can't, even, we can't even feel like a human being anymore. Well, you're not human. You're not. The devil doesn't want me to say that because he doesn't want you to believe that. Because if you're human, then you still belong to Adam. Come on, somebody. And if you're still of Adam, you're of the devil. Oh, come on. Hello? If you still belong to Adam, then Satan is your father. Adam fathered a race of humans. Are, are you hearing God? He fathered a race of humans. Jesus, or rather the Father, our Father God, through Jesus Christ, fathered a race of sons of God. There's a difference between a son of God and a human being. Are, are you hearing God? Oh, Lord. You guys are going to get tired of me saying this because I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. Somebody's going to jump up one day and say, I got it. Mm -hmm. 
We're not human beings. But what is the problem? Why do we cleave to the emotions of humans? Does a human being love his enemy? Can a human being love a man that just raped his daughter? A murdered his child? Can a human have the love? I mean, I'm talking about reconciliation love. Agape love. Can a human love like that? You'd have to be of God. Come on. Are, are, you, are you? I want us, see, because the devil is very shrewd. He's very shrewd. And the devil, I, you know, the devil will speak through anybody, even me, if I allow him to. And he'll speak through you, any of us, in unawares. Sometimes we don't even know the devil is speaking through us. Because he has brought us into agreement with him. And we'll speak that agreement and not realize that we're agreeing with the devil. Some of you feel like, let me tell you what you feel like. You feel as though, okay, Doc, all right, I get it. I get it now. I get it that we're of God. I get it that those who are God, who are born of God are not human beings. They're spiritual beings. They're of, of God and not of man and all of that. I get all of that. But there are some things now, Doc, you cannot refute the fact that there are some things that can happen to you. This, you know, some devastating things that can happen to you and, 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 and it would hurt you and crush you so bad. And, uh, but because, you know, you, 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 you fall into that hurt, you, yes, you, it'll hurt you and, 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 and you'll, you'll be so hurt and, uh, but, and you just need some time to collect yourself. But you'll, 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 you'll collect yourself and, because you love the Lord. So you'll collect yourself and, 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 and shake yourself. And, and then you can do what the scripture demands. See, the song that, that Kareem danced this morning says there's no gray areas. That's a gray area. That's a space between humanity and sons of God. There is no space between humanity and Christianity, either one or the other. But we have created, we create this imaginary space. And that's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to create a space where when something bad happens, something bad happens, really, something really bad happens to you, you're devastated, you're hurt for that moment, for that season, for that little time in there. But then you'll collect yourself. And remember who you are. And now you're going to do the right thing. Because you remember scripture and you remember what you've been taught to do. But what about that space when you are devastated? Do you mean to tell me God doesn't want us to, be, to, to have any emotions now? My God, we don't have any emotions. I didn't say we didn't have any emotions. I said we don't have any human emotions. 
our emotions are of the spirit. Our emotions is of the spirit. If I could find, if I could find somewhere, Pastor Colleen, just somewhere in the Bible where Jesus or, you know, had to go through something and, and, and fall out and, and then collect himself before he could do the will of the Father, then maybe I could go along with that. But, Ricky, I can't find it. I cannot find it. The word of God is not going to change. It's not going to change, saints. It's not going to change. I can't find where, where, in it, where people were walking in the spirit and then they get devastated and, they, and, and, and these emotions, these fleshy emotions come upon them. They feel all of this fleshy stuff Glory to God, this momentary, I don't care how momentary it is, it's not supposed to be. He said, make no provisions for it. Oh, we can choose to. See, that's where, that's where we miss it. We can choose. When someone does you wrong, you can choose iniquity. And the mere fact that you can choose it makes you disbelieve that you are a son of God, equal with God in character and emotion and feelings. Let me say that again. The mere fact that you can choose how you're going to feel. You can choose to walk in iniquity. You can choose it. The mere fact that you can choose it says, no, God understands that, yes, I'm doing the best I can to walk in the spirit, but God understands that I'm human now, that we, that we are still human beings. No, God does not understand that because God said you're not human. God says those who are Christ have crucified the flesh. The flesh is what made us human. The flesh is the only part of us that came from this earth. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Our spirit has been hidden in God. Yes, it was an earth and element, but our spirit is hidden in God. So what part of us, what part of the sons now is human? We've been regenerated, regened. We've been born again as a new creature whose life is hidden in God. But he didn't take our will. See? He didn't take our will and he didn't take our ability to choose to serve him. He didn't take our ability to sin. We can still sin. We can still walk in iniquity. We can still prefer the things of the world. Yes, we can. We can make that choice. But the fact that you can make that choice does not negate what God made you. Come on, somebody. And you, if you be honest, you resent the fact that he didn't make you a robot. You wish he had. So you couldn't sin. So you couldn't think evil. Come on, somebody. The reason we feel bad when things happen is because of the way we think about it. Come on. When someone does something evil to us, instead of us thinking with compassion. We think on how evil that thing was they did. And that genders an emotion that is foreign to a son. That emotion that that wrong thinking genders brings us back into the flesh, into the mind of the flesh. In other words, we begin to act like human beings. 
Y'all hearing God. Pastor Sam, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what to say. I'm just going to keep preaching. Somebody's going to get this. Because the devil, the devil wants you to contradict the word of God. You see, and I'm an apostle. I'm a contender for the faith. I got to contend for this faith. Because if, if I stand here and preach for the next 10 years and only two people get it, it would have been worth it. That's my job, is to contend for the faith. It doesn't matter if all of you say, I don't believe that, and walk out the door. I'm going to stand here and contend for the faith. That's what I was called to do. I'm not going to rewrite this Bible, and neither are you. Hmm. You, can't, you can't erase what your spirit has given sanction to. You can't erase the fact that your spirit has bared witness with this. And some of you will never get it. Let me tell you why. Because even right now, some of you just, you know, there's some people that just sit in iniquity. Just sit in iniquity. I was, I was, I was, I was sharing with, um, well, some, some, uh, one, a couple of the ministers was, was sharing with me the disposition of some of the saints. Glory to God, and, and, and to learn of that disposition. You know what I said? They need to leave. Need to leave, Bible teachers. If you can come here and sit on this front row every time the door opens, and don't trust me, don't believe in me, don't believe this word, argumentative, And, it's, and, oh, let me put another one on there. You feel that you should be ordained, and I don't ordain you. Oh, God. The whole world blows up when people don't get ordained. And they get into all that negative character, glory to God, and, and, and all that, 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 that evil disposition, which only is a manifestation of why they weren't ordained. It proves that they weren't ready for leadership. Glory to God. And so people like that will never. And I said, I said to, when they were giving me the report, I said, well, you know what? It's, it's, it's getting close to the time. It's, 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 it probably is very close to, to just say, let us just say to that, those people, leave. Why are you here? It's time to go. I would not sit up under someone I didn't believe in. My soul is too precious. I wouldn't sit in a church where every time I come, I'm full of iniquity. I'm not in agreement. Why would I come? That's a waste of time. What am I coming for? I don't, what am I looking for? Something to be to debate. Something to be argumentative. Glory to God. It's time for, for people that it's time for people, especially veterans, people that's been saved a long time, to either grab a hole or keep moving. You know, it's, it's time. Because you become a stumbling block. You become a hindrance to all those around you. Amen? And see, people do things in the dark. I don't do it in the dark. I do it in the open. <laughs> Amen? I do it right in the open. I don't have anything to hide. Amen? Don't I? <laughs> Amen. Praise you, Jesus. So, glory to God. I, you, know, you know why I would say that? You know why I would say that? Because we're, we're, not this, we're not this traditional church that's a catch-all for everything that comes through the door. We are a people that are trying to get to heaven. We're a people that are trying to satisfy God. And we can't do that trying to drag folks that's pulling against us. Just pulling against, pulling against, always mad, always full of something. We can't get there. So let me just, I'm going to insert, this is an insert in the lesson. If you don't believe this, I'm talking about if you, if, I'm, talking about, I'm not even talking about the deepness of the message here. This, 
faith. But if you don't believe in the ministry, then leave. You should leave. Find a ministry that you believe in and can be comfortable in. Come on, somebody. Isn't that fair? If you're not comfortable with me as a leader, find a place where you can be comfortable with your pastor. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. No love lost. We're going to always love you. But go. For your own sake. Go. I've had to tell people to go and tell the deacons, this person not allowed in here. Adverse character. You know what God said to me? Norman, God said, don't wrestle with that anymore. We don't have time for ministers to be sitting in counseling session with that kind of spirit. Taking up precious time that you could be working with that heart that is reaching out to God. And trying to find its way to perfection. Come on, and you wrestling with someone that's debated and always, always on the wrong side of an issue. Always in the midst of iniquity. We're not doing that anymore. No, amen. There's a, been a changing of the guards now. Glory to God. We're going with God. We're going with God. And you, you know, and you all look at me like, Oh. Mm-hmm. You don't hardly hear preachers tell, tell people that. But they're trying, to, they're trying to get numbers. I'm not trying to get numbers. I'm trying to get sons. I'm t- I want people that's ready to go with God. Come on, let's go with God. I, don't, I, I, I want people to follow me as I follow Christ. Glory to God. Are y'all hearing God? Hallelujah. That was an insert. Now, back to the lesson. Some of you won't get it because you're reasoning. You're in agreement with the devil, and you don't know it. Whenever you give a space, whenever you give a space for fleshy emotion, you're in agreement with Satan. Let me, let me ask you this. At what point, if Jesus is our example, at what point now, from the Garden of Gethsemane, on his way to the cross, he's going to the cross, they arrested him, they beat him. Was it at the point where they beat him that he was so hurt, so devastated, that he had to shake himself? Mm -mm. At what point, at what point was it that, was it when he, when they pulled his beard, when they plucked his beard? Was it when, well, maybe it was when they stripped him naked and nailed him to a cross? Or maybe it was when this, the, the Pharisees said, well, you know, you, you raise the dead and heal the sick and all that, and I come down off the cross. Or maybe it was way back there when, when they arrested him and Peter, the man that laid in his bosom, said, I don't know the man, three times. Huh? At what point? And don't give me that Jesus was the son of God. Who are we but the sons of God? Who are we but very Christ? Hmm? At what point now? Did he have to collect himself? Did he have to shake off uh, some, that, that human, that humanity that Mary gave him? Come on, come on. 
See, Mary is the one that gave him humanity. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Humanity was the body that he lived in. Are oh, y'all hearing God? That was the flesh that he lived in. At what point did he take on, did he start think, thinking like men? At what point did he think like a man instead of a son of God? Show me. I can show you where when Peter told him, no, don't go down there, you know. Jesus said, they're going to crucify him. He said, no, 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 master. We're not going to suffer that to happen. I can show you where he told Peter, get behind me, Satan. But see, you stop right there. Don't stop right there. But thou dost always savor the things that pertain to men and not the things that pertain to God. Peter was thinking like a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was thinking like a man and not a son of God because he was a man. He couldn't help but think like a man. Y'all hearing God. The body that Mary gave him was human. But Jesus never let his identity rest in the flesh. He was the son of God. He was the son of God that knew that the only thing that made him the son of man was his human body. At some point, you've got to accept that truth for yourself. The only thing that makes you a son of man is your human body. It's not lawful for you to think like a human being. <laughs> human beings think with their fleshy mind. Sons of God Think with the mind of Christ. Are you hearing God? Whew, I was going, to, I, I got to go where God sent me to go. I'm going to get to Corinthian one day. Praise you, Jesus. Maybe not today, but one day. Look at this. Oh, bless his holy name. Look in Romans. Back up to about the fifth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing God? Uh, let's see. Let's see. If, let me find the uh, uh, the best scripture here to express what I'm trying to say. All right. Well. Let's see. Maybe I want to. Maybe I want to use a different scripture here. <clears throat> Let's look at the sixth chapter. Let's look at the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You got that. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, if you reckon yourself as dead to sin, the scriptures say, how do you live in it if, you're, if you reckon yourself as dead? 
if you reckon yourself as dead to sin, then you can't live in sin. Is that right? Someone goes right here when I said go there. Well, Dr. Banks, hurt is not sin. Grief is not sin. I'm talking about emotional pain, hurt. You know, when, when we hurt. How did Jesus feel when Peter denied him? How did he feel? How did Jesus feel when Judas betrayed him? I wonder how he felt. What kind of emotion did he have? Well, we can go with when Lazarus died, he grieved. So that means that there's grief in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Even God said he was grieved with some things. Are you hearing God? Even God was grieved. So there's grief in the spirit. I wonder how Jesus felt when people betrayed him. When a man like Peter that's been with him for three and a half years and, and then gets in the face of the enemy and say, I don't know this man. I don't know him. I do not know him. I don't know him. And so much so till he started cussing. I want, and listening to that, I wonder how Jesus felt. What kind of emotion did he have? Is it possible is it possible that at that moment he felt compassion for Peter? Could it be that he understood that this was his weakness, that this was a weakness of Peter, his flesh? He was weak in the flesh. And he had compassion. I think maybe that's real because I, I seem to remember before they arrested him, he said to Peter, he said, now, when thou art restored or converted, then go and convert your brothers or restore your brothers. In other words, you're going to betray me. I wonder how Jesus felt walking alongside these 12 men, knowing that they're going to desert him. Knowing that Peter's going to deny him, the spokesman for the group. The one that he allowed to walk the water. That inner circle, Peter, James, and John, that, that, that he allowed on the Mount of Transfiguration and, and inside of all of these, these miracles that he excluded the other nine but brought those three in. That made them part of the inner circle. I wonder how he felt when they deserted him. What was the emotion? I wonder how he felt when he said, the same man that's sopping with me, eating with me, is going to betray me with a kiss. I wonder how he felt about Judas. My Bible tells me way down in the last book of the Bible, it says he even gave Judas a chance to repent. Is it possible that when people did evil to Jesus, is it possible that his, his, his 
His emotion was compassion. How can you work, oh God, for God in the lives of his people without compassion for their sin? Are you all hearing God? But we want a space there. We want to put a little space that says that thing hurt. I can make it hurt. All I got to do is think. All I got to do is think how good I was to them. How good I was. Gave these guys the powers of the world to come. Let them experience the Holy Spirit resting upon them. Let them cast out demons and devils. Exalted them above all men. And this is how they reward me. The moment trouble comes, they desert me. Peter claims he never knew me. Judas betrays me with a kiss. The, other, the rest of them scattered all over the place. I was with them, did, did miraculous things. I raised the dead, and they don't believe I can raise my own body. I told them I was coming back the third day, but nobody believed. I was with them for three and a half years, and they don't believe nothing I told them. If they did, they'd have been waiting at the tomb for me to get up. Come on, somebody. Come on. If they believed Jesus, don't you think they would have been right there waiting to see him walk out of that tomb? They didn't believe him. How do you think he felt about that? Are you hearing God? Hmm? Are you hearing me? How do you think he felt? Compassion and love. Well, Dr. Banks, are you saying we never get angry? Did Jesus ever get angry? Yeah. He, somebody said, well, Jesus got angry and he whipped those guys out of that temple. Yes, he sure did. He got angry, told them to get out of his daddy's house. You done made it a den of thieves. Just like I did this morning, say, get out of Bible teachers. If you don't agree with nothing this, that's coming forth in this word, it's same, same, I'm in the same spirit he was in. That's the Holy Ghost saying, get out. Get out of God's house. If you can't do what God said, do this as a house of prayer. That's what he said. Get out of here. Hallelujah. But now I got, a, I got a Bible verse that says anger abides in the heart of a fool. Oh, wait a minute. Now, what's the difference in being angry and anger abiding in someone's heart? <laughs> I'll show you the difference. When anger abides... You are no longer able to work the ministry of reconciliation. Are you hearing God? And let's, let's look at that now. Stick a pen right there. But some of you need to know this. Go back to 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter. Look at the 17th verse. Let me just answer this question first. Uh, well, look at this 19th verse. Well, no, no. 18th verse. And all things are of God. We're in 2 Corinthians 5, 18. 
And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You see a colon there? Let me explain the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ. That's how Christ was able to work the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling the world unto himself. Watch this. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, not laying the sin to their charge, not putting it on them, not putting the judgment of sin on them, but working the ministry of reconciliation. And has done what? Committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The same ministry that Jesus had. Look at this. And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us the same ministry. God in us reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their sins upon them. In other words, no matter how evil a person has been, God said, through you, I want to bring him to me. Are you hearing? Through you, I want to bring that evil person to me. I want, I want to be able to work the ministry of reconciliation. I've given you that ministry to allow me to bring that person to me. Are you working with me? But now if you are angry, if anger abides in your heart because of what they did to you or what they did to someone you love, because we can, we can be angry with people from both direct and indirect experience. They don't have to do anything to us. We can be angry because of what they did to someone else. Are you hearing God? So he's saying now, if anger is abiding in your heart, that's darkness. Hmm? If anger lives inside of you, then now I can't, I can't work through you. Because I don't have fellowship with darkness. Anger is a part of darkness. If, if you're going to be angry... Don't allow your anger to inhibit the ministry of reconciliation. Because those same people that Jesus whipped out of that temple, he went to the cross and died for them. Are you hearing God? Those same scribes and Pharisees that he said, you're nothing more than whited sepulchers. Glory to God, you're nothing but a cemetery. Graves, walking graves. You look white on the outside, but inside is nothing but dead men's bones. You're corrupt. Mm -hmm. and, you, and if you stay like that, you're going to die in your sin. Those same men that always tried to entrap him, the ones that turned him over to the Romans for crucifixion, he went to the cross and died for him. Not only that, but while he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. I don't think anger was abiding in his heart. When anger abides in the heart, there's no room for compassion. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? And, and, and oftentimes we, we, we're angry because of what people do to us. What people do to you does not excuse you from working the ministry of reconciliation. I say what people do to you does not excuse you from working the ministry of reconciliation. Are y'all hearing God? It doesn't excuse you. You have to work the ministry of reconciliation regardless. 
that space, that space is there. It's there. You made it. Those of you that are watching by way of television, I hope that you're learning this morning. I hope that we're coming to a place of belief. This is so serious, so serious. Because if you reject this message, you reject the very essence, the very core, the very heart of salvation. You reject everything God did for you. You must understand what it means to be one with God. If you don't understand oneness, you can't walk in the spirit. You got to walk in the spirits in order not to fulfill the lust of the flesh. We got to destroy that space that exists, that we have created to exist between humanity and Christianity. Am I reaching anybody this morning? Is anybody belief coming up? I'm going to continue along this line. I'm going to, I'm going to continue teaching this. This coming Wednesday, this coming Friday, I am going to continue to teach this this coming Wednesday. I want everybody here. Everybody. Everybody. Hmm? Oh, we got revival. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Reagan better teach it. Hallelujah. I may have to jump in there and say a little something. We got it. But you that are listening by way of television, watching by way of television, we love you this morning. And our time is up for you. But I hope that you have enjoyed what you've heard today. And I hope not more than that, that you've learned something. And I hope that the consciousness of your belief has been lifted, has been elevated, and you've been edified. This is Dr. Banks and all of the BTI family saying, we'll see you next time. Praise you, Jesus. Praise furnace he said if we willfully sin Hebrews 10 if we willfully sin after we know the truth he says we're worthy of more punishment than Israel it if you really believe God somebody need to say God help my unbelief help my unbelief help my unbelief help me to believe God this is more than just a good message it's more than that it's life reality practical reality hallelujah somebody need to say help me God help me believe this help me believe in who I am help me to break through the flesh barrier that I've created you destroyed it but I rebuilt it even in my mind, I rebuild a flesh barrier that separates me from you. We will tear down. 
Oh, holy God, holy God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us. Help us. Repent, say. Repent for unbelief. So God, help me in my unbelief. Help me. Unbelief is a sin. Help me, God. Help me. Help me. Just help me. I need to believe all the way to righteousness. Help me. Help me. Oh, holy God, help me. Help. Help. Pastor Joy. Somebody need to say help. Hallelujah. Lord, this is always a precious part of the, the service for me, and I, I don't want to be up here profiling. That's what Pastor Sam said earlier. Because I discern the space in my own life, you know, when I operate in impatience and the human emotions are felt, you know, and if I leave and don't honor God in how he has spoken to me this morning, then all I would be doing is going through some rituals or routine, and that's not what my life is about, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to make it into heaven, I'm trying to be a vessel that is of value to God, and I don't want to be dressing up and coming here. Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and it's an act you know it's Hollywood so I was waiting for the cushions to be put out you know so because I need to be there you know and maybe somebody need to help to make this altar um, call but I just want to tell God I'm sorry and just to just to ask him to help me you know so um, it's not about me it's not about Doc it's about whether or not it's when not mentioned if two persons would believe. And I said, in my heart, if that is coming down to that, God, I have to be one of those two. You know, I have to be one of those two. You know, because many crowds followed Christ. You know, but in the end, most of them left. You know, and he was the truth. So I want to, I want to bow before the Father, but I'm going to ask us to come, those of us who found ourselves. I don't care if we wear a title, I don't care what it is. Just come and let us honor the Lord and just let us embrace truth. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. It's our heart, Christ, our heart desire, God, not to be left but that we honor you in all that Hallelujah. we say and we do. So, Father, our hearts are poised towards you this morning. As your people come with a heart that is open, that, God, we hear you today. We hear your word, and we, we, we see where we are found short. We're coming up short, God. But, Father, we want to make it right. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help our unbelief, Father. Help us, Jesus. Father, we can't be helped if you don't help us. God, we thank you that you have brought your word, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have sent your word to our hearts, God, and we thank you, God, that your word has come and it has pierced our heart today, God. And Father, today, right now, we fall on our faces, God, and we say, help, Jesus. 
Help us, God. Help us with a little bit of help, Jesus. Oh, God, forgive me, Lord. God, forgive me. Oh, God, a soul is crying out today and is saying, forgive me, oh, God, for not believing in your word. Forgive me, God, for not walking inside of your word, Jesus. Forgive me, God, for leaving a space to sin, Lord God. Father, when I look at my life and I see where I've stepped out, God, forgive me, Jesus. Oh, God, I want to make it in today, Lord Jesus. God, I don't want to be found here another day. This is my cry, Lord God. It's my desire, Lord Jesus. It's my heart, Lord God, to make it in God. So come and see about us, Jesus. Oh, God, come and see about your people, God. Come and see about me, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, cause his flesh to die, Lord Jesus. Every emotion... Every desire, God, we give it over to you today, God. Everything about us, we give it over to you today, God. And we ask Jesus that you just have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Wash us again, God. Purge us again, God. Clean us up another time, God. That we won't be found here another day, Jesus. Wash us, God. Help, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us, God. Help our unbelief, Jesus. God, we want to change. We want to move from where we are, God. We don't want to stay the same way, Lord Jesus. And that's why we come to you, God. We come to you crying out for help today, Lord. Help, Lord, help. Somebody need to just say, Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. It's me, Jesus. It's me, God. I need your help right now, God. Because I see where I am, Lord, and I won't make it in God if you don't help me, God. I won't make it in God if you don't turn my heart, Jesus. So God, turn my heart today, God. Father, turn my heart, God. Oh, God, I don't want to be in the gray area, Lord Jesus. God, I want to see black or white. God, I want to be on your side, God. I want to be on Jesus' side. I want to make it in today, God. Father, don't let me leave here the same way, God. Oh, God, have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Jesus. Father, for too long we have, we have lived in our emotions. For too long we have lived in our feelings, oh God. But today, God, I pray that everything of this flesh will be left here at the altar, God. So that when we leave here, we know, we know, we know, God, that indeed you have touched us. That indeed you have washed us. That indeed you have purged us, oh God, of every sin, of every evil desire, of every Everything that is not like you, God. Every lust of the flesh, Lord Jesus. Every wantonness, God. Everything that dishonor you today, God. We lay it down before you, God. Every hurt, every disappointment, everything, God. Forgive us, Jesus, for walking in the flesh. Forgive us, Jesus, for crucifying you all over again, God. We ask your forgiveness, Jesus. Oh, God, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Jesus. Oh, God, have mercy, Jesus. See about me, Lord. See about me, Lord. See about me, Jesus. God, I can't do it without you, God. Pierce my heart, God. Pierce my heart, God. Purify my heart, Jesus. Cause my heart to see you, God. I want to see you, Lord, in all your glory. I want to see you, God. I want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, God, I want to make it in Jesus. So, God, wash us today, God. Wash us today, God. God, we turn away from everything that's not like you, God. We're turning away, God. We're turning, Lord. We're turning, God. We won't be found there anymore, God. We're turning, Jesus.
Turn us, God. Turn us, Lord Jesus. Father, you are the potter and we are the clay, God. So we ask that you mold us and make us and shape us like you, God. Turn our hearts, God. Turn our hearts, Lord Jesus, back to you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We cry out to you. We cry out to you, Father. We cry out, Jesus. We cry out to you, Lord Jesus. Help, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Hey, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Bye. 